Katrina mycota comes in a parasitic form or in a sapro. As a sapro, the Katrina mycota fungus lives in dead organic material. The fungus in sapro form is responsible for the decomposition of dead organisms. They also decompose organic plant material such as pollen and cellulose. The, in parasitic form, Katrina mycota is considered negative though. One example of the Katrina mycota parasite is Cinctrium endobioticum. This parasitic fungus attacks plants. A plant that is mainly affected by the, the fungus is a potato. An affected potato with this parasite causes wart disease such as this in the picture. Wart disease causes the potato surface to become rough and produce wart-like structures. If a potato with this disease is eaten by a human, no harm will be done. Another example of Catrillium mycota parasite is Bacchoclectrachium dental batitis. This parasitic affects amphibians with vertebrates. The parasite mainly affects frogs and causes Catrillium mycosis. This disease is known to wipe large amounts of frogs in less than a few weeks. Done. Where do Catrillus get your food? Like all fungi, chytrids live in your food and have an absorptive mode of nutrition in which they secrete digestive enzymes and absorb the breakdown products. Chytrids are either absorptive heterotrophs or parasites. As absorptive heterotrophs, they are saprophytes, meaning they live and grow on dead organic matter so they feed off the decaying organisms making chytrids important decomposers. In the form of parasites, chytrids serve as food for zooplankton. Chytrids are excellent food for zooplankton because of their size, shape, and nutritional quality. The free living cysporic stage of chytrids actively searches for and infects host cells, extracting nutrients, and then developing into mature sporangia that releases new zoospores, making them ideal food for zooplankton. In addition, zoospores are rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids and cholesterol, which are essential for the growth of cr crustaceans such as crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and barnacles. Chytridium mycota mostly live in the water, generally ponds and streams. Some live on land that is moist. Chytrids grow on pollen grains. They can also be found on algae, which is any photosynthetic organism of aquatic or moist habitats, and umycota, which means egg fungi, and refers to the large, round ugonia, or structures containing the female gametes. Other chytridiomycota habitats include a variety of invertebrate animals, or animals that do not have a backbone, and protozoans like amoeba, flagellate, ciliate, or sporozoan. Chytrids are also found in plants. In the genus Alpidium, chytrids are common in the roots of many parts, where they can cause major distortions of the tissue and serious damage to the plant. They also live in stomachs of some animals, as well as decaying plants and insect parts. All right. What is the name for the reproductive structures? Catrids grow and survive in a wide range of habitats, soil, water, and from cold polar regions to the tropics. And this is possible because of their varied strategies for reproduction may be key to their, it, that's the key to their success. <laughs> uh, catrids are predominantly asexual with the dehiscence, which means, you know, when it splits, and after it splits, it has a dis uh, discharge of unwalled zoospores. The zoospores are multiple asexual spore uh, with flagellum for locomotion. Um, and these, these zoospores um, uh, come out of the sporangial openings, uh, which is basically, you know, where the spores are produced on the fungus. Um, and th th those openings, they range from inoperculate to operculate. Uh, operculate, you know, uh, like we, we learned with the fish, um, it's, it's when, the, when it doesn't have a lid. Operculate, it has a lid. So, you know, it, it opens, it closes. Um, 
The rate at which fully formed zoospores become capable of motility varies as does the time they swim. So they're, you know, they're kind of like sperm. You know, they, 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 the zoospores, they kind of swim around with the little tail, the, the, the flagellum. Um, as does the time they swim. Ultimately, zoospores locate a suitable substrate with draw their flagellum into their body and produce a wall around the zoospore, and uh, which then develops into a thallus. And the, the thallus is, you know, like either the stem, the leaf, you know, just parts of, of a fungus, you know, or of, of a plant, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, the plant grows from it. <laughs> Asexually produced, um, uh, an asexually produced thick wall um, in the in the resting sporangia may also form. Um, so that was the asexual part of reproductive uh, system, you know, the how it works. The sexual reproduction occurs more common in the most basal class, which is called the, uh, uh, hopefully I say this right, monoblepharidomycetes, in which motile sperms fuse with non-mobile oospores. So this time it's not zoospores, this time it's sexual, so it's oospores, which are sexual spores developed from a fertilized oosphere, where, you know, you can think of it kind of as the, like, you know, like the eggs, the female eggs. Um, and yeah, so the, every, there's different kinds of, of, um, of, of these uh, chytrids, and each one Actually, there's little variances in how they reproduce. It all depends on where they're at. So, you know, uh, if it's in the cold region, uh, it's going to reproduce this way. This, If it's in the hot region, it's going to reproduce this way. So it all just depends on where it's at. So that's what, that's how they can um, manage to be, you know, successful in growing and populating and all that because they can, they have this variance in the reproductive system. And so now... Um, we're going to talk about a little more of this and also a little bit of the BD, the one that, that kills, you know. So, yeah, so now it's uh, Malia. So one of the really negative effects about Chytridium mycota is it produces the BD fungus. Now, the BD fungus is really negative to frogs. It's estimated that around 6,000 frogs are infected with the BD fungus every year. Now, what the BD fungus does is it builds up keratin. Keratin is what makes your skin like hard. And this is really bad for frogs because frogs have to breathe through their skin and they get water through their skin, they drink through their skin. So this buildup of like a hard layer outside of their skin prevents them from getting that and that really kills them off. Now, a fun fact about Chytrinium mycota is that it is one of the very few funguses that isn't that is asexual reproduction. Usually funguses, what you can do is kind of cut them off and then like that other piece that you cut off, there are two different funguses now. But this one, um, it has asexual reproduction through zoospores. Um, now I have a video to show you what zoospores look like, which is a really interesting thing.